What's cracking, Josie Garfunkel? Let's learn some shit. So in this video, we're going to talk about local area network or a local server, why you need it, how to get it. So this is a completely vanilla Chinaris server setup locally, directly on my PC, local area network. And right now I'm running a community online tools admin tool so it can reveal some stuff and, uh, I have another video that gets into that, but I'm going to show you why this is important. So if you're on console and you already have a PC or a laptop, so you can mess with the Daisy editor to build your JSON files and whatnot, then you might want to consider checking out the Daisy server on PC. What you're going to do is in your library on Steam, you'll see Daisy server if you've already bought Daisy on PC. This is what you want. This is what you need to install. It's pretty straightforward. You just install the Daisy server. But what this does is give you a server directly on your PC. It's not hooked up to a place that you got to pay monthly for a four slot or anything like that. This is free. This is right here. And this allows you to check your loot economy, test events. Uh, right now, I just have all the loot on so you can see everything. This is a vanilla boat event, but at least I can see that it's working right say i'm testing infected here i can see that it's working and what this is is the esp tool in community online tools and i'm telling it hey i want to see this stuff and it's pretty straightforward it shows you that stuff it even shows you the players if you have them selected here's mr josie standing over here by the railroad track waiting on a ride but yeah, so this is why it's important for you to have a local server. You can see what's going on with your server before you put the money into getting a Nitrato server or whatever you're doing on PC, just so you can actually fully set up your server how you want it and get it tested without having to pay the money and waiting for the reload times, the load in times. This is all pretty quick right here from your PC. So let's go over how to install the Daisy server locally and get it running. So you're going to go to your Steam library, and if you've already bought Daisy, you're going to see Daisy server. You're going to install that. It'll say install right here. Go ahead and install that. Once you have the Daisy server installed, you'll need a couple things. You're going to need a batch file which is a start batch file. We'll have this in the Discord. I got mine originally from, I believe, King Alabar, who got his from GitHub from another video. I don't know. They just get passed down, basically. They're all over the place. So we'll just have a basic setup of a batch file in the Discord for you to grab. But you're going to come down your C drive to your Steam Apps common folder, and in there, where your Daisy folder is, now you're also going to have Daisy server folder. Let's open that. And this is where you're going to put the start file, the start.batch file. And it'll put itself down here somewhere, however you have them categorized. But basically, the start file tells the server to start under what parameters. This is what that looks like. Now, in here, in the example file, we'll have this. But you will have a section called mod equals. And this is where you're going to put your PC mods, your admin tools, whatever you want to test to, uh, you know, set up a server. Also, in this example that will be in the Discord, this is already set, but profiles equals config. In the past tutorials I've watched, all of them say to do this. However, uh, the server is going to have either a profiles folder or you create or it creates a config folder. Profiles or config, some mods tell you about the profile, some mods tell you about the config folder. They're both talking about the identical same folder. It's just where all the mods information goes and usually where people's logs are set to go. This is where you can get your server log, your script log, your crash log, everything. Like that's just where you get your stuff. This is also where the configs go for various mods that produce configs. They'll all go directly into this folder. 
Now, my example does have this. I don't like having a profiles folder. It makes more sense to me to have a config folder. So profiles does equal config. And again, this is already in the example we're going to provide. If you get it from somewhere else, you might have to add this. In this batch file, server config. All right. So that's going to have server dz.cfg. We will have one of these in the Discord as well. Now, in the server dz.cfg, the server config file, basically, this is where you can have your parameters for your server name. You can put a password on it. Again, this is locally on your server. It's not like you're having friends connect to this. This is just for your personal use for testing and setting things up, or if you want to solo play, whatever. But here's where all those parameters are, third person, crosshairs, etc. But down here at the bottom, you're going to have a class missions. The missions is what map it is or what economy files to use. Now, again, this can be named anything as long as they exist where they're supposed to exist. Let's hop back over here to your server folder. In your server folder, you're going to have an MP missions. This is where your missions are. I have multiple set up. I also have multiple start files and multiple server config files. This allows me to set up multiple different servers on the fly. I can mess with my map project. I can mess with a custom Chinaris. I have a test server for Bitterroot. I have a Sakal, Namalsk, Livonia, Kimsey, just to play around on for myself. But that's where you would set these up at. You would put the mission files into the MP missions folder inside the Daisy server folder. And the server config is just calling that. And then the batch file is calling the server config. So the batch file, this tells the server to start and it calls this config. That config then calls these mission files. Because they exist in this folder, we have no issues. It loads it up. It's pretty simple. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I can go into more detail in the discord if anybody would like, but this is where I set up all my servers right here on my PC and I use notepad. So I open the folder as a workspace. You can click file, open folder as workspace, and then you pick the Daisy server. That's what I did. And now in Notepad, I have everything that's in my Daisy server as this little directory over here. So I can mess with any config. I can go to my mission files right here. I can pick which mission I'll be messing with. Vanilla Chinaris. I want to mess with the events. There it is right here on your left hand side. A nice easy directory. If you need to edit your batch file because you want to add in different mods. There it is. Click it right here in Notepad. You can edit it right here. In your Daisy server folder, right? Let's go into our Daisy server folder where you put your mods, you have your mission folder right here, and then you have your server configs and your start batches. What I personally like to do is I right click on here on whichever server that I plan to mess with. Like right here, I have a vanilla Chinaris and I have my map project. I make a shortcut. So for me, I need to right click it show more options and I can create a shortcut and then drag that shortcut right to my desktop. And then I no longer need this folder at all. Same with the Daisy server. I make a shortcut of the Daisy server right here. And then I, it'll, and we can just do this real quick, more options, create a shortcut and it'll give me this shortcut to this folder. You would just drag this onto the desktop. Then right here from my desktop, if I want to start my server up, I just double click my batch file. It'll start up. It'll pop this little window up over here. And this is literally the server right here. This is the server running. You can it'll go pretty fast here shortly, but you'll see all the processes happening. From there, you would just open your launcher because, again, this is your server. Your server's already up and running. It was that easy. If you want to reset your server, wait till this takes off so I can show you what I was talking about a moment ago. Classes, groups, it's just going to go through some stuff and it's just going to start. There it is. It's just going to start spawning all those mission files and stuff right there onto the server. But if I want to restart this local server, 
in this first box that popped up. Double tap and it'll just that's the server restarting right there. It was that simple. I'm sure right now you're probably used to a regular server restart taking a couple minutes. No go there. It's right here. It's that simple. It just restarted. And from there, servers, you will come to your local area network. And this down here on the end, LAN, local area network, this is your server. You will click join. It will tell you what mods are on it. For demonstration purposes, I do have community online tools, which requires community framework. And that's what gives me the admin tools that I was showing you in the beginning of the video. And there we are. We load directly into our local server. Now, if you had your tools on, you would simply do this. ESP. I want to see the animals, the boats, the infected. Thousand meters. Auto refresh every one second. Show them. It's that simple. You can at least check your economy. So it's very handy for you to check what kind of changes you've made to your economy files. This is very, very handy for you to see what's going on directly on your server without having to have boots on the ground, walking around the town on your Nitrado test server, logging into your Xbox. You can save so much time and money and many headaches by just a couple of admin mods on a local server. And if you already bought DayZ for DayZ Editor, the server is free. It comes with it. It's part of it. So I hope this helps get some of y'all going, some of y'all more efficient in your craft. Let's recap real quick. So we went over why you need this just for this simple reason alone. There's thousands of other reasons why to have this local server set up. But we went over how to get the Daisy server off of our library. We went over grabbing the batch file and server config file examples if they weren't included in the download in the discord so you can grab those we'll have a channel marked local server we went over how to set up your batch file and how it relates to the server dz config file we went over our mission files how to put multiple missions within our daisy server and how to open the whole thing as a workspace in Notepad. That is pretty much my entire local process uh, as far as what's directly associated with the process of having a local server. I thought the explanation of the admin tool and the Notepad were kind of important to show how easy it is for me to just flow through things. Mission files, whatever server, it's that easy. But yeah, there it is, local server. I hope this helps you get on your way. Hope you learned some shit. I'm out.